response. Yeah. Hi, Batman. I'm a queer from the British Blacklist. Okay, no, How are you feeling? I'm impatient. Yeah. I don't, you don't understand. I just want it up. Bad. Like, I want to wake up tomorrow and it's the 27th of June. So, um, but I'm happy. Like, everyone's been positive and mm. polite about it. So it's all good, man. I'm happy for my cast. Yeah. Like, my cast, they become, like, my extended family over the last few years. And they're all nervous and excited and worried but happy. And I just want... You know when you see them jumps that the cast do, like the sex yeah. head cast? I want that for them. I don't yeah. even mind if my followers stay the same. Like, I'm trying to disappear into the background, just have my work out there. But I really want them to fly. So I'm just hoping for the best for them. Man. Yeah, you're like a proud uncle, man. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. <laughs> like, we, we slaved in this show, you know. Yeah. It was hard work. Hard work. You're super confident. You exude confidence. So I'm just so you're saying that you're nervous. What are you most nervous about? It doesn't hit my expectations of success. Okay. That's okay. what I'm nervous about. I doesn't. It doesn't matter if five people came into this room now and said it's shit, it's shit, it's shit, it's shit. It doesn't matter because I know it's not. And I, I love it yeah. enough where it's like, okay, you didn't get, you didn't get, you didn't get, you didn't get. Okay, that's a shame. There'll be other five people that do, but it's the level of success that I wanted to hit. If it doesn't hit my expectations, mm. I'll be sad. So how long is it? Because you said it took four years to make, but how long has Super Soul the idea been knocking about in your mind? Well, to be honest, the first time I ever spoke about it was in 2019 when um, I was doing promo for my um, Blue Story, mm. and I didn't even I had the idea in my head, but it never I never put nothing in the paper. But the day that I spoke out loud, it was like it went from my ears, from my mouth to God's ears, and it it started building because mm. months later in in 2020 I started writing it. I started writing it. So it wasn't, I'm not going to sit and say I've had this idea and I didn't make it. Because I'm very much, if the idea kicks in, I start making it you straight did, away. Yeah. But the minute I spoke it out loud, it was just on from there. So and what's, what's that driving force? So when you have an idea, how do you build your world? Do you build the world or do you build, start with characters? No, I start with, um, I start with the world first. I mm. need to know where this is set, where it's based. And then I need to know who's the person that we're going to be following. Who's, mm. So then I go into the characters. And this was different because I've never done a superpower thing before, so I had to do a whole, what would be the powers? Where are we just going to be set? Because shows like this are normally set in New York. Why, are we bring, why should we bring them to South London? And then I have to do a few months on the characters. Who's going to lead it? And how do you dif differentiate a character like Michael to a mm. character like Andre? They're both black men, both in their 30s. How are they different? Because like, on paper, when you read it, I remember reading it and it was Netflix, was like, you know, on paper, it's like, is Andre like Michael? Don't you yeah. But when you watch it, you don't ever think that they're the same person. Like, but this is, this is something about when you have authenticity writing yes. and telling the story because you can tell the difference and yep. you can shape the difference between this black man from that yes. black man. So but what did you find most challenging? Because writing a feature is... A Right, you know what's mad? When I started on this, I didn't want to, I was going to write one episode at that. I didn't even mm. want to write no episodes, mm. you know? We had writers' rooms that just kept on basically failing the process. Okay. Two writers' rooms, good writers. And it's not because they're bad writers, it's just the story I was trying to tell. I don't think anyone understood it, and I don't think I explained it clear enough, maybe, because we kept on getting failed attempts. So it came to the point, I remember just saying to Nick, I just write it all myself. And I was like, yeah, fine. I was like, what? I ain't written that before. What do you mean, yeah, fine? <laughs> Say no, get someone to help me. <laughs> but, um, I just remember my movie American Son that I was doing with Russell Crowe just got pulled underneath me. Like, I was working yeah. on it for a year. Yeah. And then the COVID came when they pulled the film. And I was like, okay, I can't have two non-green lights back to back. So I just went. I locked myself away for a year. Netflix gave me an office. I beat them up. Um, and I just wrote every day. So okay. what was it like telling Netflix? Or, uh, how did that come about, that deal with Netflix? Because on the back of Blue Story, obviously that was super successful. Yeah. Be exceeded expectation as yeah. well, probably. It wasn't easy just walk in and like, yo, I've got Blue Story, I can nah, do this. Nah, it weren't. It's funny, I met Netflix before Blue Story came out. Okay. So obviously, Shadow Story signed me to, got me signed to Rock Nation. When Rock Nation signed me, they said, what do you want to do? I said, oh, I want to set up a TV show. Mm. I want to do a movie, but I got this sick idea for a TV show, and it wasn't Super Soul. Mm. So I flew to LA, <clears throat> and I pitched this other TV show. Everyone had a little bit of interest, they said, but the only people that got excited was Netflix. They was mm. like, okay, we love this. But it's set in the UK, so you got to go back to the UK and pitch it there. So I went back to London, um, pitched it to UK Netflix. 2018, by the way, she saw all she's seen of me is Shower Story. She loves Shower Story. Um, she really liked me, didn't love the show. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. But then she's reached out and said, Do you wanna we wanna do a, something with you anyway? I said, You got an idea? Can we take you to dinner? We went out to dinner with her. And I just started telling them this idea, these ideas, and then Super Soul idea came out, and they just went quiet. I was like, why are they got these times I'm stuffing my face with the free food that they're giving me? I like, oh, quiet, God, we love that, we love that. Can we do this? I said, look, 
my film comes out in two weeks. Let me just see what that's going to do before I decide. So then after um, Blue Story came out, they reached back out to me mm. and said, like, can we get going on this show? And we just started going. So working with a budget, a Netflix budget, how does that differentiate from working with Blue Story and Shira Story? More toys, more people, yeah. more responsibility. Mm. Um, being a showrunner is basically like being a director times 10 because you've got to be over every HOD. You've got to be over the whole story. It's your job. Like Even if I didn't write all the episodes, I had to make sure all the episodes would have come together. Mm. It's a lot of work. Um, you get more toys. But that's what that's really it, you know. There's always a wall. So what did you what did you learn about yourself in this process that you you obviously you learn every project you do. I you, said, yeah. I felt like it was a film school for me. Mm. I learned how to shoot on green screen, mm. I learned how to work on stunts, um, all things I've never done before. Like it was like I've, there's nothing I haven't shot now. Mm. I can shoot any you I can shoot whole sequences on green screens. Like there's if you watch that Piccadilly scene, that's all green screen, yeah. that ain't Piccadilly. Like, we shot the whole thing, so I learned everything, man. Like, when you're shooting for how long, you pick up every aspect. So I'm now prepared for the step I thought I was ready to go to straight after Supercell to Marvel, for example. I mean, after I'm blue straight to Marvel, I wouldn't have been ready. Yeah. Now, there's no set that can scare me. It's like, eh, if I want to do it or I don't want to do it, but I can do it. So when, if, when you hit, like, an obstacle, how did you motivate yourself through it? Who did you consult? And how did you, like, keep going? It was hard. I had, um... It was hard sometimes because sometimes your vision doesn't in line with the vision of the network. Mm. The good thing I would say, I had Mukta, who was another exec on the show, who was always like a voice of reason. He mm. wasn't, he wouldn't just pander to my ego. It would be like, bro, I don't know if that's a good idea. And even if it, if I still said, no, it is a good idea. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Adam's motivation for the show was just as big as mine, who's the head of Netflix, who was basically like, it was a big, big budget she's put on the show in the sense of it was a, it's not a show that's been seen before. So we would go back and forth, the pros and cons of what I'm trying to do. And um, it was always a reason. I never got stamped yeah. on. You know, it was always like, okay, if this is what you want to do, let's go with it. So they turn this, whatever you like about the show, I can say it was on me. And whatever you don't like on the show, I have to say it's on me because yeah. they don't really enforce nothing on you. I love the show, by the way. Um, two questions. I'm trying to get two questions in. I really loved it. Like, and I think there's that weight of expectation when you have a project that's for the UK, yeah. never been done oh, before. Trust me. And I know your pressure, but I was. I was like that, watching it. I was like, it's oh, going to so, be good. So, so many people have said that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it's really good. And um, one thing that's in like an extra character is London. South London, like, specifically. South yeah. London, specifically. <laughs> How important was it that you represent it in an authentic, but yeah, it's, you're elevating it to a superhero land. It was super important because I always, mm. why are all the superhero shows in New York? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, London just as popping. London is just like New York. Yeah, why yeah. don't we have these things popping? And, and that was so important. I remember saying that to them when I was pitching them. Like, like... So it was important. I don't know. I know you got the looking at the times. So yeah. I'll be quick, but it was super <laughs> important because I think South London is full of character, and I think the show shows that. And I don't think there's any other shows with South London like that. Quickly, if you were to join a supercell with your normal skills, what would you bring to the table? Oh, no, without no. powers, what would you bring to the table? Oh, without my brain. Okay. Like my brain, man. Like I'm gonna be the one. I'll be the one to have to strategize how to win. Like I'm. I'm a good. I'm very good at being strategic and about how to get to the next stage. Right, so that'd cool. be me. Thank you. Right, cool, man. Thank you for that. Congratulations,